In 1903, pioneering cinematographer Billy Bitzer filmed some of the first moving shots by placing a camera on the back of a milk wagon. Early car chases were photographed by attaching cameras to the fronts of automobiles. By 1916, Bitzer had placed a camera on a crane to provide a sweeping, high-angle perspective of a backlot Babylon for D.W. Griffith's Intolerance. Over the years, cameras have rolled down tracks, taken to the air on planes, and been attached to basically anything that gave movement to a shot. On today's sound stages, cameras are often placed on cranes atop mobile platforms called dollies. State-of-the-art camera cars, such as the Shotmaker, incorporate a crane arm atop a fast-charging vehicle, providing smooth shots for even the fastest action sequence. But locations beyond the reach of traditional camera platforms require even more innovative methods. One system filling this gap is called the cable cam, a movable camera platform that can be suspended above almost any terrain. Creator Jim Rodnunsky saw a need for this device when earlier in his career, he attempted to film skiers on extremely difficult slopes. The cable cam is essentially a dolly suspended by cables in the air instead of, say, being mounted on a truck or on a track on the ground. We can fly down rivers, we can fly over waterfalls, um, down mountainsides, uh, through stadiums, in places where you couldn't drive a camera car, maybe a helicopter, wouldn't be able to get that low or get that close to people or animals, that kind of thing. One, one. The camera carriage rides on metal track wheels that grip onto a constantly moving cable. The cable itself runs in an endless loop powered by a hydraulic engine. While the word cable normally suggests steel, the cable cam uses ropes made of a synthetic fiber. This is what's basically the lifeblood of everybody on this system. I guess maybe one of the reasons why you call it cable is when you pull about 10, 12,000 pounds of tension on this, it feels like steel when you go up and touch it. A half mile length of fiber rope weighs only 500 pounds. A comparable steel cable would weigh at least 10 times that and be far too difficult to move and install. The cable cam system can cover distances of up to half a mile, quickly accelerating to a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour. The camera can be operated either remotely or by a cinematographer riding on the carriage. Look at this drone! For this TV commercial, Jim rode the platform to chart the path of a baseball thrown by outfielder Kirby Puckett. I had to fly the camera from the outfield where Kirby's throw began all the way into home plate. The baseball and target screen images were added in post-production, creating the illusion of a missile zeroing in on the catcher's glove. Setting up the system is a two-day process for Jim's team. The first step is assembly of two 60-foot towers to hold the fiber cable. The towers are hoisted by crane, and then securely anchored into the ground. Next, the cable is unspooled and run between the two towers. We have two cables. One performs the suspension function, and one performs the braking and retrieval function. Finally, the camera platform is attached to the cable. The system has kept up with many speeding vehicles, from motorbikes to kayaks. But here at legendary racetrack Churchill Downs, the challenge is to follow the ponies for television coverage of the world's most famous horse race, the Kentucky Derby. To make the system as unobtrusive as possible, the camera is operated remotely by radio control. The cable cam provides the Derby broadcast with a never before seen perspective on this most photographed of races. Given its far-ranging capabilities, Hollywood effects artists were quick to seize upon this revolutionary technology. For the Canadian television adventure series, Neon Rider, a cable cam was used to capture a galloping herd of wild horses. In the past, this kind of shot was nearly impossible, 
The traditional camera trucks or helicopters used for moving shots would scare the horses, denying filmmakers such close proximity. We're just slightly above the horse's field of view and right beside the horses, and they just came literally right up and bumped into the dolly when we were going down there. It was about a 1,400-foot shot. The cable cam proved its versatility in a vastly different setting on director Spike Lee's family drama, Crooklyn. For the opening shot of the movie, Lee had the camera fly through a residential New York neighborhood. They needed to preserve the look of that street, so they decided to put the dolly track in the air. We started on about the fourth floor of um, a brownstone in Brooklyn and then, and then fly down the street with the kids. For the magical fantasy film, Three Wishes, director Martha Coolidge turned to the cable cam for a crucial effect sequence. You're just gonna float like this. In the story's climactic moment, a young boy soars above a carnival. A helicopter was used to film high angle aerial shots but it was too dangerous to bring the chopper close to the carnival rides for shots representing the young boy's point of view. For these, Coolidge looked to the cable cam. What was great about the cable cam is that it can go very fast and change its perspective. It has a real incredible feeling of speed and flying at a lower altitude than a helicopter can be. Footage of the young boy flying was photographed against a green screen, a temporary background often used in filming effect shots. It really looks like he's pushing against wind. Look. I'd say we got it. Yeah. The images from the cable cam and green screen shots are combined in post-production, along with the finishing touch of computer-generated fireworks. The entire sequence is overseen by Academy Award-winning visual effects supervisor, Phil Tippett. Modulating how those different views are, are working together really gives you the, the you know, feeling that we're looking for in this sequence, which is to you know, give this little boy who's been very troubled up to this point in the film a sense of you know, life and fun and, and play. In the completed scene, the boy takes to the air with the greatest of ease, an illusion generated by a battery of effects and a highly ingenious camera system. Coming up, we'll see how fast-moving cameras and even faster film speeds provide the punch for many memorable special effects shots. One of the earliest techniques in effect photography was simply varying the speed at which the film was shot. Early cameras were hand-cranked to move the film past the gate. Comedies and chase sequences were often under-cranked producing speedier action and a humorous effect. But smoother images would require more streamlined cameras. When shooting, each frame of film must stop behind the lens long enough to be exposed. A major advance in camera technology, the development of register pin movement, allowed film to be moved past a camera's gate at a uniform rate. In motion pictures, the standard practice is to expose and project film at 24 frames per second. When film shot at a faster speed is projected at that standard rate, the photographed event is seen as slow motion. Today's visual effects artists often film at high speeds, especially when shooting an effect sequence with miniatures. In the cyberspace thriller Johnny Mnemonic, Rocket missiles are launched on a secret compound situated under a bridge that actually stands in Montreal. Since blasting the real bridge was out of the question, it has been faithfully recreated in miniature at Fantasy II film effects in Burbank, California. The effects team, led by Gene Warren Jr., has crafted the bridge in 1 12th scale. It's about the smallest scale that we could do it since we have uh, pyrotechnics and you know, all of that type of action going on on the bridge. Uh, to go any smaller, it's difficult to make it look real. Oh, it's, it's way too hot on that second tower there. L let's bring that down quite a bit. All right. Pyrotechnician Joe Viscosal rigs the bridge with black powder and gasoline bombs designed to destroy the miniature in a fiery inferno. To truly impress the audience with the power of the blast, it will be photographed with a camera capable of shooting at high speeds. The frame rate 
That, that is how many frames a second that we will run the cameras is 120 frames a second, five times normal speed. All right, we're rolling. Action! As seen on the set, the blast is flashy, but ends all too quickly. But when the film shot at 120 frames per second is projected at the standard 24 frame rate, the effect creates a series of explosions of enormous proportions. High-speed cameras are an important tool for heightening dramatic moments in features and TV commercials. And the fastest cameras in the industry are made by Photosonics. We can run high-speed cameras here at Photosonics as high as 2,500 frames a second. When you project that back at the normal 24 frames a second projection speed, you have 104 seconds of screen time of an event that lasts one second. Obtaining such high speeds requires a camera with faster than normal internal mechanics. Rather than register pins, this new camera uses a four-sided rotating prism to expose individual frames of film. The film travels through the camera without stopping. It's a continuous roll through the camera. The prism bends the light to wipe the image onto the film as it travels through the camera. The rotating prism camera is capable of exposing a thousand feet of film in only six seconds. At this accelerated rate, the tiniest shift or movement could ruin the shot. So the camera is often locked in place to photograph slow motion footage. But if the desired shot requires that the camera move, special preparations must be made to generate a steady, rock-solid image. In Hollywood, effects photographers frequently turn to the Westcam mount to ensure steady action images. Westcam pioneered gyroscopic technology to stabilize a camera attached to a moving vehicle. Six feet on the nose. Much like a child's spinning gyro toy, the West Cam gives the camera a stable base, allowing it to tilt and pan smoothly, even when the vehicle it's attached to is moving. To create a slow motion shot for the comic book inspired action film, Judge Dredd, camera operator Steve Coster encloses the high speed camera in a protective globe to help ensure a stable picture. The dome enclosure is used primarily for uh, wind protection. For instance, this shot, the wind buffeting is enough to upset the balance of the camera. So the, the enclosure just protects it. Uh, Pat, are we doing that? The goal of this effect shot is to capture pyrotechnics igniting in slow motion across a wall. Okay, folks, everybody stay clear. Here they come. Against a pitch black sky, the flash powder charges explode in sequence as the camera car charges past. To portray exploding windows during a chase sequence, the picture is flipped on its side. The West Cam shot is then combined with other filmed elements and computer-generated images at Visual Effects House Mass Illusion. That color correction just right. The result is a near miss for Judge Dredd and a moment of pyrotechnical poetry for the audience. When we return, the flying cam charts a new course for special effects photography. The invention of the movie camera preceded manned flight by eight years. Not surprisingly, shortly after the Wright brothers built their plane, someone sent a camera up with them. Since then, most advances in aerial cinematography have concentrated on new methods to stabilize cameras mounted on planes or helicopters. But on occasion, some have wondered, what if the camera itself could fly? Among those who dreamed was Emmanuel Prevener. When I make forward flights... As a boy in his native Belgium, Emmanuel began experimenting with both cameras and model aircraft. In 1980, he successfully combined both passions in his creation, the Flying Cam. This radio-controlled helicopter captures smooth, soaring shots previously unobtainable. It's totally free in the air, and it's human size. So you have no connection between the ground, like a crane. So it's totally free. If you need to change the point of view, it's very easy. Basically, you have a lot of freedom. 
more, far more freedom than ever uh, with a crane and even with a big helicopter because this one is so small. You can fly through a window coming from outside, a small room, then go outside and turn around the building. Operating the mini chopper requires a deft controller. Emmanuel pilots many of the flying cam's flights himself. Actually, the helicopter is like a second human being for me. I don't feel it when I fly. I, I, I forget it totally. I am in the helicopter. And uh, the relationship is really like I am the helicopter. This personal relationship is reflected in the flying cam's design. This helicopter is six feet, exactly my size. I'm six feet tall and the uh, wingspan is six feet. The weight is about 30 pounds, ready to fly, equipped with a 35 film camera. The pilot uses two joysticks to fly the helicopter. One controls vertical movement, the other controls right and left turns. The maximum speed will be at about 70 miles per hour. We can fly backwards also. Uh, we can spin the helicopter also. We can, we can uh, rotate the helicopter with the tail rotor. Okay, go up slowly. A second person operates the camera with controls to pan and tilt as well as adjust focus. To send the controlling radio signals, both operators must stay within the flying cam's line of sight. For some locations, keeping up with the camera is a challenge in itself. In this commercial for Swiss television, the pilot and camera operator follow the helicopter in a chase car. Here we go inside the tunnel, very dark, difficult for the pilot to follow. And uh, then we will stop with the chase car here and we'll let the helicopter go for the rest of the shot. Here we have a fence, so the helicopter passed over the fence and then somebody opened the fence so that the pilot can walk and follow the helicopter to go through this passage because it's quite a long distance. Besides providing expansive visions, the flying cam offers tremendous flexibility, as demonstrated when it chased the Montreal Expo's mascot around a baseball stadium. We climb a little. That's normal speed. I mean, it's about 10 miles per hour. Right turn. I have my earphone to hear my camera operator tell me what to do. Okay, here it's landing. It's only one feet above the ground, nearly less. Having proven its capabilities in Europe and Canada, Emmanuel has brought his innovation to Hollywood. The flying cam chased Bruce Willis's boat in the thriller Striking Distance and soared high over Disneyland to promote the Magic Kingdom. But perhaps Emmanuel's greatest challenge was this flight over a waterfall. This footage can be seen in a flight simulator ride at Busch Gardens theme park. This is probably the most difficult shot I have ever done. It was like 300 feet high, the waterfall. So I was really afraid to lose the helicopter down there. Impressed with the unique capabilities of the flying cam, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences presented Emmanuel Prevenaire with a 1994 Technical Achievement Award. Prevenaire's lifelong quest marks another step in the professional cinematographer's goal to create new shots that transport audiences. Ultimately, these cameras and support systems are only tools to tell a larger story. But special effects photographers see no reason why pictures must be limited to a thousand words. For them, the excitement of the moving image, which began when cameras rode in the back of milk carts, continues today. Whether the cameras are flown or carried by cable, whether they're shooting high speed or steady by a stabilizing mount, it's the final shot that counts. And these shots are state of the art, all spellbinding examples of movie magic. <laughs>